Thanks for getting that MTS. Okay, so we were talking about these outcomes. So the way we get there is through the three steps on the side, which is auditing and cleaning out your tags, connecting and synthesizing those tags to connect the dots with your team, and then educating your team on usage and just maintenance. So starting off with auditing, MTS has covered a great um, demonstration of this in his functional demo, but here we'll walk through how this relates to the process we did at Guru. So starting off by deleting, merging, and organizing our tags was a clean slate for us to begin with this process. So we went through and deleted all unnecessary tags, silly tags, random tags, you name it, and tags that had no cards attached to Guru. I think I found around five tags related to Harry Potter that I was really upset weren't attached to any cards, but I had to delete them in the interest of this tag audit. Merging. We talked about merging in a way to reduce those duplications that may be confusing your authors as you're creating cards and as they continue to come up as suggested results. So merging solidifies that and creates one, one tag that can, you can use moving forward. And organize. So organizing in tag categories is a way to think about your tags in folders that not only serve in this organizational function, but when you use the tag filter, actually appears a header above those tags in that. So that really lends a really awesome guide for users who might be curious about what tags to use. If they see a tag under a header that makes sense, maybe to their team or for that feature, they'll tend to use that, that tag more often. And the way we organize our tag categories can differ from team to team and depending on your preference. We actually did ours based on our organization chart and also our teams. So I've heard a few of you mention that you also do this in the Guru community when we prompted um, our questions. So this really works super well if you have a large organization or just multiple teams in Guru and helps you create and bucket those tags depending on teams who are gonna be creating them and using those tags on a very specific and everyday basis. So when using a CX team tag, for instance, this type of category, you can think of your FAQs, slide decks, best practices and trainings, all going under CX team tags. And once that, that is going in an order, um, you'll be able to maybe hand that over to a CX champ to help you manage and maintain those tags to make sure they're running effectively. We also implemented something called Gear HQ All Teams tag, which you might be curious about. This just includes all of those tags that might not necessarily fit into a certain team. So thinking about features, spans, different collections of different teams, plans, and things like that that live in a space that is um, ubiquitous, ubiquitous for everybody to find. You can also use categories um, for asset types and knowledge types like industry and, and things like that, that if work really well if you're, let's say, just working with your support team in Guru or a few teams in Guru that are able to bucket that out really nicely. And the goal of this process was to clear out the right side of tags, which have no tag categories attached to them, and just try to get them all into a categories that can then prompt us for our next steps. And it's a really good feeling, if I can vouch for it. Great, so now we're moving on to connecting your tags. So this is a phase where we're gonna be brainstorming new tags with your team and getting some other experts on, involved with you as well if you have that available to you. So this is great time to speak with your collection owners and subject matter experts about what tags are they using? How do they search? Uh, what tags are most important to their workflow? What are we missing? And to reflect our knowledge structure, what does our board structure look like? And is there any way that we can maybe connect this with tags even better? So I've seen teams facilitate this through surveys with their teams, one-on-one -on -one interactions, or, or kind of handing the baton over to that knowledge, ma um, knowledge manager or collection owner to facilitate this with that team. So if you still are kind of curious about this process, I linked a card here that goes through just, just this in more detail and also provides a tag worksheet that serves as a good brain dumping spot if you don't want to kind of create cards and um, tags willy-nilly before putting them in Tag Manager, feel free to use this worksheet as, as kind of your drawing board. Great, so now that we have our tags figured out, we're gonna go through the tag re-tag process. So after I actually worked with teams on product, marketing, sales, and CX for the following step, it was time to get to work in retagging. So I know retagging can sound really daunting when you have tons of cards and collections to manage, but if you do divide and conquer with this, it really can be a simple and streamless process um, by taking on a little bit more help from your team. Not saying you can't do this yourself, but we were able to accomplish this for our CX team in an hour through this strategy. 
So with retagging, we like to use Card Manager. Card Manager is great for just getting that overall view of your cards and performing bulk, bulk actions. So we're using filters on the side to sort by our customer's experience collection in our example, filtering by boards, which in this case, I was working on our FAQ board, and then using title contains a filter just to narrow down into that specific topic. We then select, bulk select the cards that we wanted to tag, and then use that bulk tag action to be able to do so really easily and add multiple tags at once. You can also use this to remove tags as well. And finally, and maybe the most important step is education. So education for your team and that maintenance plan moving forward is honestly the most important part with tags to make sure that machine of your tag structure is running really smoothly and operating effectively. So for this, we created some cards tailored to each type of user in our instance to make sure there was no gaps in how people were managing and using tags. So we created a, a card for our end users to how to search by tag. This can be just a card that lives at the top of a collection or as a general card in Guru that provides your team with those, the rundown of your most used tags you created, when to use them, and maybe a functional video of how you've used them in the extension or, or maybe Slack to search. For authors, we created auto tag templates. So that's streamlined that card creation process and made it really simple for authors to know which tags to use and which tags to add. To fit the use case of not all templates will be able to feature all the tags we would like, we created the header, which I featured here on this slide, to remind authors to please tag using these features, which has been really good to seal those gaps when we can't auto tag everything. For admins and collection owners, we created a tag maintenance plan. So just like you'd be using um, analytics to uh, assess your team weekly or monthly and your performance in Guru, taking time to also take a deep dive into your tag manager and card manager every, while, every once in a while is really effective. So here we use tag manager. Once we clean that out on the right hand side, you can use it as a crowdsource to see what tags are being created without tag categories by your team. And that can be a great coaching moment to remind that team member about different tags you have at, uh, at your disposal or find ways to merge those tags, delete any duplicates, and then also maybe come up with new tags that you, you didn't think of on your own. In addition, we've had teams do a tagathon. So tagathons um, and we have a lot of teams also who do guru barbecues, they call them, which is where they sit and either have pizza and food and they get together and manage guru and do some of this maintenance work. And that makes it really fun and again brings a lot more team members on board. And just a tip if you weren't already familiar, in Card Manager, there is a safe filter that is pre populated for you called Untagged. So you can use this filter to surface any cards that, have, that are untagged in your instance. And what I like to do here is to also uh, combine this with a date range so I can see what cards have been created in the last 30 days without a tag. Great. All right. So I just went through a mega story of how we re-tagged our Guru Instance in Guru, and I'm sure you have a lot of questions and, and maybe a little bit more deeper insights that you would like to gather. We put together this card, so there's no question marks here. So it's how to build the tag structure with anecdotes to how we did it at Guru, a lot of best practices, a lot of tips, and running through the whole process with some samples and more. So feel free to check this out at any time. You can access it through this link, and we'll follow up with it after um, our demo today. But I also wanted to show you guys just a little sneak peek of how our tags look in Guru. So if everyone can see my extension, if I use a support use case, I actually did this with my team when I was training them, just showed how easy it was. So I selected FAQ with the framing uh, tactic that MTI showed, I actually created them for feature. So this helps if, no, if if your users aren't familiar with the feature tags quite yet, it creates a nice um, scrolling capability under Guru HQ All Team Tags. It also comes up the same way if let's say you just search for um, the feature as well. So this helps us stay super organized. And then you can layer more cards on from there. So with tags, it's also great to layer with keywords. So for instance, I would probably layer with one more keyword there. For marketing, our champs on the marketing team have done a great job with doing this for our blogs. So we have a master tag that's gonna ac uh, accumulate on all of our um, templates for our blogs, and then we narrow down by specific topic. So this works really well, because then our team can layer on by use case, if let's say the sales team's looking for a specific use case, a uh, blog post to write about, and so on and so forth. So this has been really effective for us, and so far has helped us with, with pulling that knowledge in Guru. 
And with that, uh, I wish you all the best of luck with tagging and I'm gonna pass it along back to MTS who's gonna talk about change of behavior and then open up our discussion. Awesome, thank you so much for that, Maria. And I hope that everyone was able to kind of pick up on a, on a thread there. And that thread being that you're not alone when it comes to tagging, that you can and definitely should um, pick up the collection champs or authors that are, are very much on board with what's happening in Guru. and you know, use them. And, and Maria said she started off by saying she's on the Knowledge Council, right? And so that can be a really cool thing to kind of shape up um, as well. Um, and we're happy to help with that too. Um, but for, for something that I actually took yesterday from another webinar um, with the Chief Learning Officer from NASA was something that I had to like steal and like put into this presentation because, I don't know, I just loved it and I felt like it made a lot of sense for what we're trying to talk about when it comes to getting behavior change with tagging for, for you. Um, and one of the things that um, this woman said was to have a clear vision for text. So make sure that that is something that you're spelling out to someone. And if you're making a card on instructions, then maybe that can be, you know, you can use this structure. Hey, here's the vision. Um, then you want to teach the team the actual skills and habits, right? We can't expect them to do anything if they don't have the skills. Um, third is think about incentives for the team to use them. And that can look different or wide, but maybe there's some cool creative ways to, to do that. Um, and then provide your team with resources, right? Like Maria just mentioned that Guru Public Card, which is just like amazing. Please, please, please check that out when you get the deck. Um, and, you know, that can be a starting point for you and for you to kind of kickstart what you know, what behavior change you want to have happen. And then finally, have an action plan for you in a way that says, hey, I'm doing this so that it can serve your best interest to improve search functionality for our team, make your life easier. And then also one for them um, and, and be explicit on like what you want them to do. Um, and that can look different again, um, um, team by team or by org. So a couple of takeaways and ideas that we wanna share. Um, Maria mentioned the Tagathon, and we had a customer, Noom, do this. And Noom is a, a health and wellness and fitness app, um, and, and it's more than that. It's it's really kind of an amazing tool. But they um, they they performed a Tagathon, and they said our our knowledge is crazy, our tags are crazy. We got to like clean all this stuff up. It's getting out of hand. And so they did just kind of what we were talking about. They got a bunch of collection champs and authors on the same page. Um, all, and gave them a presentation and said, hey, here's what we plan on doing, here's our timeline, here's action items, and here's what we hope to get to, right? And so now they have like a booming tag structure, which is really awesome. So we wanted to share that quick success story. And another cool tidbit from them is that they, um, they have um, English cards with Spanish tags um, and then Spanish cards with English tags um, that they had to kind of wrap their brain around as well um, when they were doing this tagathon. So that was kind of a cool one as well. Um, so we just wanted to shout them out as someone who did something really great with tags. Um, another, another couple quick items, just so that you can try to get some action items this week or next week, right? Set some time aside in your calendar before July ends. And if it's half an hour, an hour, um, if you're gonna move all those loose tags like I was talking about over to categories, um, or if you don't wanna move them over to categories, maybe just get rid of some of some that don't really make a lot of sense or merge some, then uh, you know, there's, there's some opportunity to knock that out if you have some time. Um, another really cool tip is to create a tag glossary. So have a card that has a list of all the tags that you're using and wanna use. And if, of course, you know it's gonna grow, but that way if an author is making a card and they're like, hey, what, what tag should I use for this? They can reference um, the tag glossary to be like, oh, something already exists here. And that might prevent them from making a duplicate tag um, and, and then make your life a lot easier when you have to maintain the tag from the tag manager. Um, also create guidelines for your tag habits in a Guru card. Send a knowledge alert out to your authors and groups that make the most sense um, so that it's clear to them on kind of what you want them to want them to do. Um, and then think about a cadence for your maintenance. You know, do you want to do this on a bi-weekly basis to start maybe to clean up um, and follow up with folks and then maybe go to a one month? That can be an easy way to do it. It'll depend on your instance, but it could be a great way to show your team like, hey, you know, there's continued effort here. We want to make sure that this is working, it makes your life easier for search. Um, okay, so with that said, I uh, would love to jump back into the Slido, and I saw that Nora left, so thanks so much, Nora, um, for being here, and let's see here, oops, I want to <clears throat> see what questions we can still answer here, present mode. Okay, um, 
if it's all right with you guys, we might try to start tackling some of these. Um, and I know one that that, that was uh, on my mind as I was talking right now was what's the benefit of adding a category to the tag? And I was like, oh, I want to get to that one. Um, and my thoughts here is that um, it's just, it's really to help you with that framing structure that Maria and I talked about, people ops colon, you know, whatever it is. And then your categories match up with that, your boards match up with that, um, departments and teams match up with that, and it just streamlines everything for you. So I think that's one benefit. Um, and I might, um, I might ask Maria, I don't know if you have any thoughts there on that one. Totally. Well, that is definitely, I think, the most important benefit you covered, MTS. In addition, when you're searching, it's just really nice to know, especially if you're structuring your tags similar to how we're doing it based on team, to know, aha, like this is a CX team tag, this is the one I'm using. It really helps enforce that behavior and ensures that they know, okay, like I'm looking for this tag within this, this tag category. So between organization and then help with the discoverability of your tags within the extension and search is probably the most beneficial part of them. Awesome, thanks, Maria. Um, the next question was, if we're utilizing board groups and boards, would you suggest creating tags that mimic collection, board group, and board? Um, and I think that we, we touched on that a little bit. And if I'm understanding that, that question correctly, um, yeah, we would encourage you to have your tags mimic those. Um, it depends you know, on your instance and how kind of complex, you know, how many, I guess I should say how many collections you have in board groups so that you can think like, do we need it for collections? Is that going to be something that we want to, to filter by? Because you can also use the exclamation point during search to filter by collection, which if you teach your users how to do that, could be a way to keep your tags a little more simplified. But um, yeah, I think like board groups and boards make a lot of sense. But if you do have a ton of collections, then maybe, maybe that works too. Um, yeah, and I can offer a tip here as well. This works super well with sections. I know we don't really have a section search right now, the capabilities for so, but if you use your sections as kind of your guide, they seem as really good framing, but it definitely depends on your instance and what works best. Awesome, thanks, Maria. And the last question here on Slido says, can we restrict people from creating new tags and only grant permission to certain authors? Um, my understanding is that that cannot happen. Maria, back me up on that one. I think if you are an author and you're making a card, you're always gonna have that functionality to add a tag. Maria, I think that's right, right? Oh, you're muted, Maria. Muted. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um... <laughs> I was muted there, but um, yes. Yeah, so as MTNs as co covered in the demo in the beginning, you can turn off the capability for authors to use tags or the AI suggests for tags. So we turn that off in the beginning phases of our tag structure, but then we would really, we really like to hear from our users and crowdsource. So then we ended up turning them on just so we could see what was kind of cycling through and, and our users were trying to create. So it does kind of work with that crowdsource and then also the iteration effect of, of tags. But at this time, we cannot restrict them to certain authors, but that's definitely great feedback. Awesome. Thanks, Maria. Um, okay, so Maria and I have done a ton of talking. We would love for um, folks on the call um, to, you know, either unmute or, you know, uh, show screen, whatever, and, and, and ask for clarification. Um, ask, tell us about your roadblocks. Tell us about your wins. Tell us about your successes. Um, we want to make sure we give a couple minutes to uh, let those questions get out there in the world. Hey everybody, I'll actually dive in here. Um, quick question, maybe I missed this in the beginning. Um, but when creating tags, was there any best practice regarding uh, using like one word per tag, using an entire phrase of words as a tag, um, as well as any sort of structuring around capitalization and punctuation in the tag that might have an impact on the searchability? Um, I can quickly speak to the case sensitive nature that you talked about. Um, in that example I did at the beginning, when I used the word design and it was a lowercase d, if I tried to make a second tag that had a capital D and just said design again, I would be prompted and say, hey, that tag already exists. And so um, you, won't be, you won't be duplicating in that sense. Um, I personally, this is just me, when I see a tag that's all lowercase, I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. And then when I see one that has that framing thing with capitals, I'm like, oh, that feels more official. That's just like a psychological thing for me. I don't know if that helps anyone else, but I don't know, that's just kind of my, my advice. But then, um, Maria, I might ask you um, to maybe comment on that multi-word versus single word uh, question as well. 
totally. That's a great question. So as for actual search, it, it doesn't, shouldn't truly matter too much if you're using, for instance, one word or, or two words or three words in a phrase. I would say if you're using that framing effect that we, we presented, which allows you to kind of scroll and comb through like a feature tag, for instance, you, that will actually approach the tags by pulling up if you type feature or if you type that, that feature specific name. The only thing that would throw it off is that um, the character. So just ensuring that you know how to properly use those and, and avoid because sometimes that might, that might throw users off. In terms of combining words, um, I think this also, this question lends really well into, let's say when you're going through that phase of merging duplications, sometimes people uh, by their nature of their search make one word into two and, and just the nature of, of how we speak and how we search. So in that case, that is a really great coaching moment because the more tags you have that are like almost pretty much the same or a duplicate or a slight variation will actually confuse your users more if you have multiple tags like with a similar type of topic attached to things. It just really, it just creates more opportunities for users to not be able to find the information they need. So that's why we really recommend um, consolidating to that one tag and just using it as a good coaching moment with your team to make sure they're using a one specific tag there. Does that answer your question, Kevin? Awesome, yes, thank you. Of course, thanks. Any other questions that we can we can answer for you here? I think we probably got time for maybe like one more. Hi, this is Veronica. I do have a quick question. Um, if uh, in the search, right, if you had created like a bucket for like uh, support and then you had tags within that bucket, um, if uh, one of our users was to search and they only use the tag, but they didn't include the bucket, are they still able to find it or they have to put the bucket in the search and then the tag? Are you speaking to like that framing bucket, Veronica, or the tag category as being the bucket? Like the tag categories. Gotcha. Um, like for example, I think we had like CX support and there was like sales and the um, guru, like all HQ from the beginning. Yep, exactly. So if you just search that keyword, they'll actually be able to see that it's a support tag based on that tag category will populate at the top. So the folder system kind of goes to play there too. Oh, okay. So they won't have to use the tag category and search at all, but it just is a nice indicator to be like, yes, this is the tag I need to use. It helps with that workflow. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome, great question. Awesome. Um, well, everyone, it's it's 2.44 and our session is here slated to end in just one minute. Uh, quick reminders, uh, if you haven't already uh, joined the community and oh, let me go back up to my event slide here. Um, and if you want to do check out the Remoticon event happening tomorrow, you were the gathering. I'm oh, sorry, Remoticon event happening tomorrow with Joe Gaspard from Yex, and then ongoing events. Um, you were the gathering July 24th, um, and then our deep dive next month. Um, I think Chris was so generous to put them into the Slack channel, or sorry, into the Zoom chat rather. And so I'm really grateful for that. And uh, everyone, thanks so much for coming. Um, we'll we'll re-record that first part because I forgot. So I'll redo my part and edit it in. So you'll have the whole thing. We'll put it into a, a public card and put it into the community and in a follow-up email for everyone. So thanks for your questions. Thanks for your participation. We appreciate you guys so much. And I hope everyone has an amazing Wednesday. Take care. <laughs>